Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you've been enjoying the intermission, catching some of the end of the Group D matches. Plenty of other Dota 2 action going on across four English Dota 2 streams here, as well as Russian, Chinese, whatever your language of choice is, there's probably a stream for you. Malaysian. I like watching the French streams from time to time. There, there's some good French casters out there. I don't know what half of what they're saying is, but I do know what half of what they are saying is. <laughs> Check out the French stream. I think there's like a dossier channel. I don't know what they're called, but find a French stream on Twitch and go support it. Tell them I sent you. <laughs> c'est parfait, Paco. Oui, c'est bon, monsieur. Um, there's, I mean, there, that, that's the great thing about TI, you know, it brings everyone together, brings together the entire Dota 2 scene. Um, and there is just so much great Dota. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here to get to watch a little piece of it with you, Winter. We've got OG versus VP. I feel like this is a very exciting match. It's a rematch of the Kiev Major Grand Finals. Not quite the same stakes at play, but definitely an important series for both teams. VP especially, because they have not had the best group stage so far. Huh. This is... Is Winter Wyvern bad? There's been, been a lot of Winter Wyvern from OG. Fly's yeah. been very good on this hero. Yeah, but how good is the... How strong is the hero? The Warren of first phase ban. That one I'm unsure. Because they always... Have, they have a defensive support, like a Dazzle. Yep. Oracle, like those kind of... Like one, one person to save your team. And it, it's one of the heroes that... Uh, it's not only like a saver, but... <clears throat> it has a very good presence in the team fight because of the ulti, the curse. And you have a very good wave uh, push push out. That's the hero. The hero. And the hero got a, got a few buffs to his uh, Arctic burn recently. The duration and some good talents. So all in all, a hero that a lot of people are trying out recently with the Lich, Winter Wyvern, Lich, yeah. Shadow Shaman. He's another hero people have been trying out, the, uh, the Birdman. Visage is uh, it started with OG. They were running it before it was cool. They were the original Be before Visage. Before it was cool. I mean, it's kind of become a cool pick, you know? Um, they were running it uh, as that five position support uh, many months back, going back to like DAC and stuff. They had like mixed success with it. It was kind of just like an alternative five position hero for Fly. Um, we've seen more of it over the last few months. We've seen it played in a carry role for No Tail as well, I think is important to note. It's been played mid by some teams. RTZ. Yep, Arteezy's been spamming them pubs. I don't, at EG, I don't think it played it at this tournament. I don't know for sure. Not I don't yet, think so. But maybe. <laughs> it's a very strong hero, um, so, and it's flexible in where it can go. And so is Night Stalker, VP's first pick. A very, very strong hero because of uh, the vision control. Last game we talked so much about how Liquid were really good with the vision, and that's what Night Stalker would provide you. Good vision control. Um, pretty strong in the first few minutes to secure at least one lane. Very annoying, like tanky hero, high regen, can trade Harris very well. And just all in all, a hero that provides you with a lot of like utility because he can build like pretty much any items that the team needs, like a Vlad's, Solar Crest, a pipe. It, he's, he's not like a hero that, oh my god, Venno and Night Stalk. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Some good luck running away from these guys. They will chase you down, they will slow very, you. It's very hard to play against these two heroes because, okay, you think about how these two heroes are going to be played. Uh, early phase, Night Stalker is going to be running around securing lanes. And once the night time comes, that's when the Venor is going to have a few, like, six level six, level seven, around there. And he's going to be sitting in one lane, forcing someone to react. Like, that's how you play Venor. He's going to pressure a tower with the wards. And someone has to come to the lane to rotate. And you don't see Night Stalker on the map. You're like, oh shit. <laughs> Then and something's flying over yeah, trees. And you, go, you, and you try to defend a tower, and then that's the point you die. That's like why this two is so hard to play with. And Venor on as well is providing vision with the wards. Night Stalker vision, Venor vision. Very difficult to play against these two here. Let's see what uh, let's see what does uh, OG do. Okay, I like the PL band. They've been uh, picking this hero a lot for no tier. Um, so I'm playing PL Panda. I, th I think I kind of like him playing on PL because PL I, I feel the hero suits him. He likes to play like an uh, illusion based hero that can push out pressure, like push out alone, and it's not that easy to die. PL is very suitable for the way he plays the game. What we saw earlier today, a game that had PL with a, it was a TA, was that there were heroes that can farm and scale well, but they also fight very well. PL just with some cheap cost effective items can be very strong, uh, and OG 
seem to be going away from that. Like, let's just, you know, farm around, play for the late game. I mean, No-Tail's always been that fighting carry player, but even with at some of Anna's picks, we're seeing a lot more aggression yeah. out of this team. This game, uh, maybe I, I think maybe like, uh, kind of like a, something like a clockwork to deal with the Venor. You want someone that can get on top of yeah, him. Yeah, get on top of him and kill him first, because the longer the Venor stays in the fight, he's going to be dishing out a lot of damage. You want to force him into a bad position, like catch him first, make him use his ulti early so he doesn't get the ulti onto too many heroes and kill him first. So there was a, was it today? I think it was the first game OG played where they had an offline S for Clockwork and it started okay, but then quickly kind of fell off, didn't farm well. Um, mm. PPD actually made a tweet about it saying he just didn't feel the, the offline Clockwork is very good. He feels like it should be played in a four position role. Uh, uh, I don't know if I you actually, have thoughts I, on it. I, I like offline Clockwork. Okay. I just like the hero. I think. The hero with definitely can function with less farm, and um, with farm, I think he's good. Maybe I'm influenced by Daryl a lot because I watch him. Like he, when he plays Clockwork, he's very he's quite greedy with the hero. He likes to buy Midas, and you know with his Radiance build and whatnot. I, I feel the hero can be good with farm, and he's quite strong in the laning phase because of the the cogs. You you pull the creeps near to your tower, and with levels you can pressure the support because you you always have the kill potential with battery as well. It sounds uh, like you just need to play a bit greedier when you're playing in that offline yeah. role. Which and is... of course, he does function well too with less farm on a support position. Yeah. Like, there's a pros and cons, like having him on a off lane or a support position. He doesn't farm particularly well like some of the other off lanes, but if you can manage to get there, it definitely. So they can just remove both of No Tears heroes that he's been playing yep. today and yesterday. Uh, this game, he might actually be playing the Visage if they need. <laughs> You know, I, I was thinking uh, about that. Okay, interesting. So S4. Is, no, this is, is not. This is not S. I can guarantee you, this is not S4 here. You think this will be? This is no tears no here. Tails here. I think yeah. this is no tears here. I, I was gonna say with the visage, I think he's actually core visage very bad against Venom because you've only got the ten percent magic resist. This hero really struggles, and and also it, the Venom ulti breaks your Gravekeeper's cloak very easily. So I think visage gets very ca hard counted by the Venno. So you kind of yeah. want to put him in a support role where it's like, well, you don't care if your your Visage doesn't, we'll just sit back at that point. Mm. The core Visage wants to be a frontline or a tank, but he doesn't tank very well against a Venno. BP is like building like a very fine manage lineup right now, which Dr. Venno like sustain. Right now they have a lot of sustain and it's very difficult to run into them because of the cask and the, the Venno boards. And Witch Doctor is also one of the better position 5 support side. Maybe they're thinking it's it might be an offlane profit because Witch Doctor, you can kill the Treants quite easily with the cast bouncing around. There are not many supports that can deal with the Treants well in the early stages. Yes. Witch Doctor and CM are the two better ones, I would say. Well, CM now with the, the mana cost probably yeah, Witch Doctor isn't very good. Witch actually. Doctor is probably the best one to deal yeah. with the, the, the Treants. But I think this profit is very likely a safe lane profit. Or even a mid profit. Uh, as long, I think No Tail will play the profit regardless of the mid. Okay. I'll play it. Yeah, it doesn't strike me as the the Anna hero. I think S Four is gonna play some some something like a, some, some other utility yeah. hero. Oh, he could be playing the Shaker, you know. He's oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, very good yeah, Shaker that's true, player. That's true. We it's, don't quite it's know still yet. still quite open for them. Whether that's gonna be Jerex or uh, S Four's hero. Yeah. They could just go like maybe for like, if they want the Earth Spirit to initiate on the Venom first, then Earth Shaker could be promoted to yep. a off lane position. They may want to save hero and get something like a Tusk. And they get the Terra Blade. Well, hey. is it gonna be a No Tell Nature's Profit? Well, no. <laughs> that's now being brought into question with this Terra Blade pickup. So it's a push. They're gonna go in for the full push with the Profit and Terra Blade. So. Gustav playing Nature's Prophet. That's very strange. Because it doesn't right, doesn't fit his play style thing. Because he is more like the person that runs around. He finds the momentum, he finds the tempo. He's the playmaker. He controls the pace of the game. I mean Prophet, you can somewhat do that in terms of tower push. You pressure a tower. You TP in, you find an opportunity, you get a gank and you pressure a tower. But he's not like the person that's gonna be making the first move, like you initiate, he's not the initiator. It may just be a pick of necessity, they're like, well look, we're versing a team that wants to 5-man, Venno, Witch Doctor, they saw those heroes, they're like, Nature's Prophet's gonna fit here, they may just put him on a hero in a role that isn't his normal one because of that. Okay, here comes the 5-on-5, five five, boys. You say 5-on-5, five five, it feels like VP are gonna 5-man a lane and then OG's gonna split push though. To some extent, like OG yeah, won't. Yeah, OG yeah, yeah, doesn't no, no. want to team fight right you're, now. You're, you're right. You're right. Because they they are going to wait until they reach a point that they feel the TV can take them on. Then they are going to 
only start to find man but before that maybe the familiars the proper will be spitting and Shaker will be looking for opportunities and they ban out the sniper uh, sniper is really good at defending against pushers yep pretty good against terabit um the other hero that's good against terabit would be like something like a Zeus but I haven't seen I don't know if BP I, will Ember that. could be very good I feel um uh, pretty good with the magic I, damage I, I like the Zeus because of the banner on it the okay. Zeus banner combo but then they, it might be a little bit lacking in terms of like the because it's if they pick the Zeus, it means Banner's gonna be off lane, and then Banner off lane is. I'm not sure if Pasha plays yeah. that hero. That's that's actually a good point. Yeah. Where how they're gonna play the Banner? They're probably gonna put Ramses on the on the the Lycan and Banner mid, I guess. Yeah. I'm actually not sure though. <sighs> possibilities here. I mean, Banner, Banner might be better off lane this game for their lineup because they can then maybe pressure the Terrorblade. They do Banner plus Night Stalker off lane, and then Lycan, Witch Doctor, safe lane, pick another mid. Yeah, what? that's what they're gonna do. They okay. pick uh, Queen of Pain, so they're gonna have that burst to take down the Terra Blade. Yep. I like the idea of having the burst damage. It's kind of why I like the Ember. Is like it's burst damage also here that can deal with that split push that has high mobility. I think that's where like a the Ember, the Quap are good. It's like you can get back, defend, push out a lane, push out a lane quickly, and then go join up with your team. Yeah, still I kind of feel like I like the. This is quite greedy. I feel from OG with the Invoker what? pickup. Invoker, Terrorblade, there's these two Invoker heroes need a lot of farm against a lineup that is going to be looking to, to push fairly early on. So what they need to do right now to hold the game, so they are going to have to rely on the... The Prophet needs to do a lot of work in the early stages. He needs a, qu a, a quick kill levels, and then he needs to like use his TP with the Sunstrike. He sprouts Sunstrike, get a few kills here and there. That needs to happen for OG, yep. because they are quite uh, farm heavy in terms of their tricore. So early game, the Shaker is going to try to hold the early game for them. He's gonna probably try to not sure if he needs to fissure for the Prophet. I don't think Prophet needs it that much, but he can choose yep. to do it if he wants to. The the key lane for them to protect is the mid lane. Because it's gonna be a nice stalker corp mid. They need to protect the invoker. So it's gonna be uh, a Shaker mid to help him out. Maybe he can actually I think he can possibly I, I've seen this done before. I don't know if you've seen it in the pre what what event was it? I, I think it might have been MDR. I saw someone using the fissure to block the mid lane. So that the creeps meet near to his side, the, the high ground, and oh then yeah. like someone like a weak hero like an invoker can last it there, and then he won't be under too much pressure against the, like a nice stalker corp lane. And then once they get their levels, the prophet has level two. Then whenever the nice stalker tries to kill the invoker, prophet can TP in to help, and the the earth shaker has to always be there to guard the 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 invoker. Then yep. that needs to happen for OG. If Ana has a bad game, then game is lost. I mean, not game is lost, game, game is game will be very, very hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I definitely see it. And I think one of the things where we see, like, the TB invoker, we think kind of greedy. Note the TB in a much more team oriented way than other Terrorblade players. Yeah. You'll see him join up, look for those early pushes with Metamorphosis a lot more. Um, so you do see a lot more uh, activity from his Terrorblade compared to other players. Yeah, but I, I'm not really sure if they can get away from the early game though they have very their three cores are very good past maybe 20 25 minutes if they get their items but in the first 10 like the night stalker during night phase with the quad and the dude, night stalker like a, that itself is a combo like you, yes it's gonna be very difficult to play against the first i think if they can survive the second night like first and second night phase they did not lose too much lose too much towers they should be okay but if after the second night phase, they have lost like let's say three tier ones and Roshan down. I think that would be very bad for them. That's what BP needs to aim to do in the first two night phase with the Night Stalker Quap Lycan. Yeah, I think that has to happen for them. So right now, like I mentioned, Earthshaker and Earthshaker needs to protect Invoker. That is the first immediate objective of Jerax in this game. Yep, we'll see it. Kind of begin around this bounty room, perhaps. He's Fly is there as well. He's there, ready to block the creep. Some uh, let's see whether if he fissures and tries to you know, do something there. But in the meantime, Lil trying to <laughs> start uh -huh. to annoy Anna already. Yep, he comes in and Ooh, Lil. This is could be bad. Lil will get the bounty oh, room. Oh no, this is this is bad, Parker. This is bad. Yeah. This is bad. A lot of oh harass. my god. Anna already down to half HP. Had to tango up as well. Oh, this this guy is gonna suffer. That was four bounty runes. What? They got four, four bounty, bounty runes for BP. How? Wait, the how no, did Venner, the Venner just, Venner just, just walked, walked in and... top? It was just a nature's profit, I guess. And, and they're swapping lanes. They are no choosing tail to and fly go... going bottom. 
Wait, they're going aggro lane, so they think that their lane is uh -huh. much stronger than the Lycans. Would, they are reliant on the Metamorphosis cooldown, and but they are but quite gonna, strong But they're, with this setup, they're going to have like a high-level Prophet, which can... The Prophet can help the other lane. Oh, Solo is actually out of position here. He could be in some trouble here. The cast is thrown out. The Grave Chill slow with a Fissure. This should be a kill on Solo. Terrorblade very oh, slow. Block. He needs to block here. Fissure on the wrong side. One or two more right clicks. Can Jerex get the kill? He does with the boots. Oh, Gets the first blood. He's asking for Sunstrike. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be a great catch-up. Anna's going to struggle mid against the dual lane. He would have actually loved to have gotten that first blood. Okay, Invoker's not going to get anything. It is going to push out much. towards him at least. That's that's the good news. They're going to run up and deny the creeps, I'm sure. The nice not going to That's the sad news. There's so, nice okay, with, th with this setup, VP are totally abandoning Ramses. I think this is the right move because of what OG is doing. They are going to have to abandon this lane, and they're going to try to win the other two lanes. I think I like this move by VP. With the Witch Doctor just going top. Yeah, and the, the Night Stalker will just be missing, trying to slash pressure mid. Yep. I think S4 He's going for the enemy bounty rune. And I think the Prophet rotations are the key things for OG. They need to try to get... They can't really help... If they can't help the Invoker directly in the lane, they need to help him by getting the last hits on Kills with Sunstrike. Yeah, he's... Struggling even to last it under his tower oh, with the pressure from no one. In Second now, Talisman coming in. Okay, there goes the lane last hitting. Meanwhile, yeah, Fly went to the bounty room but ran into Lil, and that is kind of trouble for him. But Shaker's in the neighborhood, and the Sunstrike you mentioned I think can they be thrown can out. Uh, does not look likely, but they can at least push him away. Yeah, he's just gonna go back to base and heal yeah. mana with the Howl as well. But Okay, this setup right now is quite favorable for VP. They're doing really. Oh, Ana might be in trouble here. Cold snap. Oh, who is in trouble? No one does not have a blink. He pops a fairy fire, has got a salve. Anna oh, will not okay. find the kill, and the salve will help him out. Jerex comes in, doesn't have a salve for Anna, but we'll see how this lane goes down as no one does have oh, a blink. Anna Level has, 2 Shadow Anna, Strike. Anna has to be really careful here. Yeah. It's very low HP, and Night Stalker is going to be back. Can even fairy maybe something for the top if needed? Can fairy uh, regenerate like a self or something for And he does know where the Shaker is on no one's Queen of Pain side with the Observer. Oh, they're going to smoke? Yeah, they're going to look to maybe kill Jerex. No, they're not going to smoke. They're just going to walk. Yeah, walk they're going to try and at least get rid of Jerex from this mid lane. So one minute till night time. Jerex may just go down here. Queen of Pain is there. Level 2 Shadow Strike can blink in as well. Jerex has no escape for this. Oh, they're giving the Quab the last hit. Yep. <laughs> All of that set up by the uh, Observer Ward, scouting out his movement. So nicely done. This is going to be Struggle City for Ana this game. Night Face is going to kick in 30 seconds, but they're they diving are not mid. going to wait for the Night Face even. Yeah. All of Venom slow, poison from the Queen of Pain. Good damage onto Lil with the tower. Could see a Sunstrike on respawn. Lil will have to dodge this one, I want to say. Can will he, he find it? He's scouting it with the Ford Spirit. Oh, he okay. should have maybe waited. The Ford Spirit could have given some more vision, but at the same time, Lil was starting to regen up. Yep. That Sunstrike was not going to do. And Lycan is catching up because of what's happening, what his team is doing. Like, this is what you want. When sometimes you can't help the lane directly. You're indirectly helping by pressuring the other lanes. So you're forcing the lane pressure away to the other lane so that your carry can farm. What we will see is likely S4 is Nature's Prophet getting involved soon. Maybe and he waits he level has, 6. But he has to get involved. Yeah. No one is just bowling. Anna, is he going to go in aggressive for this one? Has he's, bottle charges. Bit. Oh, there's the cold snap. Anna, one, more sh one or two more Shadow Strike approaches. He's outreaching it with the quad, so he's going to live. No one actually getting fairly low. He, he has, has a sound self. still, yeah. Uh, struggle City is real. Anna, also with a salve. We'll actually see a Fissure clip no one. Breaking some of that regen of his. Now he knows there's a ward. <laughs> yeah, it's a ward that's expiring though, so <laughs> not the end of the world. I mean, the uh, shrine's gonna come up soon. So yep. uh, bottom lane, no tell. He's been gone on. Has got metamorphosis, but he needs to find a way out of this one. And Lil is likely just gonna chase him down. No tell's juking with the tangos. He goes around the tree, ring around the rosy. No tail, juking once again. He's actually maybe gonna get this kill. No tail. He tries to fly out of there, but he's got like the, the tower gets the kill. No tail doesn't even do any damage. He just jukes him in. Well, well, well played by No Tail there, saving his life and getting the kill. <laughs> Everyone gets some gold there. That helps out his whole team. So that's kind of better for Anna. Yeah, Anna's probably like, thanks for not doing any damage, bro. <laughs> I got like, I don't know how much, like 40 okay. gold or something for it. And little TPC refills the bottle for no one. You know, top oh, lane, Pasha. Sunstrike. <gasps> 
hard to How? How? Oh, they already hauled. Okay. Okay, he's oh, no. not. Okay, he's still get okay. the kill. Yeah. It's uh, Anna though dying mid. He got. Jeez, he jumped. was aiming the sunshine top and he got ganked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is very likely oh. what happened there. Bottom lane, no tells. Like, all right, time to pressure a little bit. He's popped the metamorphosis just to do some damage to to Ramsey's tower here. See so, you how know, this will play out for him. Ramsey's in the neighborhood. Needs to be a little bit careful. Hasn't got that level six just yet for the shape yeah, shift. Power's taking a lot of damage though from this siege cube. Look at how Noti is protecting the siege cube. Yep, he's got a creep wave coming in, so he really oh, wants comes to keep it alive. This, this tower's down. Yeah. They know it's a tower. That's with a great well time rotation. They they time it with the siege creep. They get the kill on the Witch Doctor. So it's not just a tower, but BP giving OG a little bit more. But they are coming in trying to... to Maybe not defend the tower so much as just take here. a fight. They yeah. Can't fight here. Metamorphosis will be wearing off soon. That Lil will fly Sunstrike. himself out of there. Sunstrike. Sunstrike. They get vision. Earthshaker is there with some illusions, but it doesn't uh, look like he's got the damage. 278 HP and in oh yeah, level it's 3. 225. Okay. And Anna, mid. Yeah, Ooh, he's going to be okay, but he takes a lot of damage. Okay, he got. Like what I expected, like this lane. It's very difficult for him. He's getting. Nice stalker club. Touched. Okay, 12 CS on Anderson Boca. Sunstrike kills seem essential for his comeback and so far has yet to be able to find one. Oh, didn't he get. He got one? No. no. He did not land Oh, the yeah, one he actually top. didn't land the top. Yeah, no, he I, was, it, I keep thinking he stalker. landed the top. <laughs> He's had a few slim opportunities. Like, they weren't they weren't freebies where it's like a guarantee, but. Fortunately, without those two kills, he is very far behind. Prophet does have ultimate, so we'll be seeing that extra bit of global damage potential. Sunstrike, Thrath, and Prophet rotating around. This is definitely going to be a good time for OG to fight once daytime hits. That eight minute mark is where they suddenly get a whole lot stronger. Still not going to be easy though, because like Venom's going to be like constantly shutting the lane top. Then Prophet has ultimate available. Okay. They see that, yeah. Prophet does. Throw the ultimate, but the heal from Venomancer keeping them nice and healthy. In comes Lil. Is he actually going to be able to get this one? He dies for it. Lil, one of the very aggressive full position players, wants this kill for his team and should be able to get it. Blink stream, one more right click, and Jeez, man. down he goes. S4 will not find Lil on the return but unless he can get a good body block off, and he's doing just that so far with daytime hitting. Lil's in some trouble. The Sunstrike is there. Won't be enough damage, unfortunately. And Invoker, Anna would have loved to have gotten the last hit for that one, and no one's bottled and used to Haste Rune, so he comes back in, but not with a whole lot of mana to that play around. That was actually but. quite uh, unfortunate that it wasn't Invoker getting the last hit. Yeah. <sighs> I feel so bad for him. I feel it for him. He's been struggling He's, so much. That's the thing, they, they had the opportunity of the last pick a hero that could have been a better matchup, but they felt like the Invoker was going to fit the fit the game, fit the strategy. Okay, so top lane, Nautia pops his second metamorphosis, trying to pressure his second power here. And for S4, regenning, so might come top to help him finish the power here. Jarex is on the way with the Fissure. He's going to, yeah, TP into the side here. Lil needs to be careful. Does have a Quelling Blade no to get out of Sprout. No Sonic TP in from Queen of Pain. Fissure oh. to block, oh. perfect from Jarex! Can they get this kill though? No tails and Craven Lulu does not have any points in the Sunder. They may be able to bring down No Tail, but. No oh my god, what a boss. No one no absolutely one destroying them. The Sunstrike will not land. No one managing to sidestep away from that one. He's going to help get a second kill for his team. No Jerex, one boss. His initial fissure was on point, but TB, I mean, there was no point. Even if he had a Sunder there, he did not have the mana to support it. Queen of Pain. This is like the second game you see Queen owning. It's like previously it was on mid, maybe it was only with the hero early in. Like very similar movements in the early game. Kill after kill moving around. Securing control everyone, move around, try to look for opportunities, like being very proactive in searching for kills instead of just waiting. Oh, fight happens, I TP makes Sonic Wave. No, this guy is just moving around. Can we get a kill here? Yeah. Can we get a kill there? We haven't seen Fly get too involved just yet. He's been in some of the kills. He's got level six though, he's Solo? quietly farming. Getting trapped by the Sprout here. Oh no, no. Sunstrike was late. Oh Just no. A little bit off. He's trying to chase him down with the right clicks, but can't even get that kill now. Oh, Very no. unfortunate for OG. But like if they, maybe they had the Visage with the birds for that top fight, they could have definitely killed the Queen of Pain and perhaps won that fight. Definitely feels like time to maybe for oh, OG to be more grouped up. Is he dead? Sonic Wave? Okay. Uh, dead again. 
Oh, no, no one's Queen of Pain. Six, zero, and two. Maybe this is the Queen of Pain meta. Where we're in. He's gonna follow up that kill with some pressure onto the tier one. TP in from S4 with vicious support, but they definitely cannot kill this Queen of Pain. With these two heroes. Yeah, meanwhile, Lycan has been farming <laughs> for a few minutes already. <laughs> we haven't really talked about Lycan. Yep. Yeah, he's he's just been throwing his howl, you know? Um, yeah, kinda. <laughs> That's the support from him. 200 HP at night, you know? Yeah. It's, not, it's not bad. <laughs> he actually has uh, 4 assists okay, night largely time. from that. This is the part I'm talking about. OG needs to hold another 4 minutes of pressure. Lil is, I think, wow, he, he sniffed went. out Jerex. Knows he's in these trees with the night vision. Jerex is looking all but dead here. TP out will not work against the Void. So it's just going in a bit of a warding mission there, but I think the Radiant Ward scouted him going into that dire jungle. And as a result, straightforward kill to get. No Tail still hasn't got that point in Sunday yet. Needs to be careful with how he plays this one. Imagine VP will be looking to burst him down. They've got a silence as well to play around. No Sonic Wave, but... Very, very difficult pressure right now for OG. They have to deal with the top lane. Benno's like, look, look at what Benno did. Pasha shoved the lane yeah. all the way towards the, the top tower, and then he TPs, and then he TPs to yeah. join his team. Like, someone has to react to top, and then they have to defend him. Very, very hard to play as OG right now. Almost feels like he could have just stayed top, but he wants to be ready because he knows that OG is a team that is like likes to fight and defend towers. We've seen that here. The birds go in, looking to stun up some of these heroes. The cask messing with them, though. The tower goes down, and VP secure their retreat with a wall of plague wards. I mean, wards. They, they know OG can't fight at all because Ana has been severely crippled from the laning phase. Yep. They have like, <laughs> kind of like a minus one call right now that doesn't do anything but farm. And, you know, set up some strikes. One tower is going to maybe turn into two and some kills. Lil finds Fly's Visage on the back lines here. The bird's going to drop. The problem is with Fly dying, these birds may, may like, likely die now as well. Three pickings for VP, who get a couple hundred extra gold, and then eyeing off this tier two tower here. No defense inside, just farm and split push. We talked about this element of OG's draft. They can't really fight into the five mana VP. Very likely they will have to just resort to split push with the Nature's Prophet, the TB, the Invoker as well. Yeah, All but, but they have to like control the speed of the game. Like pace right now is way too fast for their heroes to handle. They need to slow it down like one way or the other. They need to try. Their speed push is going to be very difficult because Night Stalker can easily catch them at this at the night time with the corp. They're very mobile heroes, Lycan as well with the ultimate to chase you around. Game is hard. Game is very very hard, and VP are going to have complete map control, Roche control, and theoretically a lamp that can go high ground very early on. Necrobook on Ramsey level one for now, but we'll be seeing this leveled up very quickly. They've got Venno Plague Wards. They've got great tools to actually take Roshan and pressure high ground very early on. Do they have a Sora? They are building it on Venom. Oh yeah. Oh no, he's just got the medallion. He's not going into four stuff. So he's not going for the full solar crest. Yep, four stuff is good though. Against the Sprout. He needs something to get out of the trees, so that's nice for him. I guess they are right now they are in no rush to get the Rosh. They just need to make sure that they keep the map pressure up. Like Beno keeps himself safe with the four star, shuffle up one lane and the other heroes can try to look for opportunities to get a pick off here and there. And OG don't even have the best ganking lineup. They haven't got a Blink Dagger on Shaker. Oh, Their Shaker, initiation Shaker's is like, very lacking. He just got level 6. Yeah. They are really far behind. It's but like if they wanted to smoke and find a pick, it's like not easy to do so. But with their lineup, if OG wins one team fight, they're gonna be... Oh yeah. They take towers really quick. They're gonna take like one or two towers right away, uh, objective. VP are uh, hunting for S4 in this bottom lane. Lil is scouting out all the nooks and crannies of these oh, trees. He's gonna, he's gonna run it. Okay, he did, yeah. He's out just in time as Lil did go searching. Top like, lane, they OG go. knows something is up. They don't see anyone else but the Venom on the map. <laughs> the smoke towards top. VP. Yep, and Night Stalker purposely shows himself bottom, so they think that they have bottom, and now that he's gonna oh, TP gonna top TP and fight. Defend this one. Here's the Night Stalker leading the way. They see that TP. They're trying to run, but it's too late. VP is upon you. There is a wolf chopping oh, the at cask? the bit. The cask is bouncing between familiars. Back to No Tell. He can't get a Sunder off. Oh, no, okay. 
and two easy kills. Again, we'll see these birds go down likely, or maybe I'll fly them to the south. Okay, they do get out of there. Oh, he TP to the bottom. He's gonna die to the poison. Oh my god, he, oh, he didn't TP back to base. He no. TP'd. Tried to make it to the shrine, couldn't quite do so. From bad to worse. OG. Oh, no. Cool. Struggling this game. They've had a good group stage so far. VP have been the ones maybe a little bit on the shakier side. Showing a very different form yep, here. They're gonna go for Roshan very soon. Uh, Venom has queued up the crest, so he is 300 go away from the crest. Yeah, this is That's not, Roshan, not looking good for OG right now. Yeah. They can't really find the pickoff, you know. They are. They really need like any pickoff, like anyone, any kill on the witch doctor or anyone. Just kill yeah. the hero somewhere with the sunshine. Was it Tower Deny at top? That's the Visage Familiars. And proper TPC to, to place down a ward. Okay, Whatever so... Whatever you can do at this point. They have a Shaker which is not too far from his blink. Um, yeah, that, that could be another way. I think Jerex is still doing okay for the situation he's been put in. Right, that's actually maybe one kind of beacon of hope is that going to be that blink dagger because to find picks it feels like they need mm. an initiator and that's going to be Jerex with a blink dagger. Yeah, and Gustav is queuing up a Midas so though. I'm not sure if I like it in this situation it's, right now. What would you what would you rather see? It feels like there's just so few Blade Mule. items that will help. Yeah, if you want to fight now, it seems like in their minds it's like, well, I, I kind of like Blade Mule now. If we're going to win, it's going to be going late game. Yeah, yeah if, if going if they somehow reach the late game, it, he doesn't need the mind. like the other heroes would have more or less Carry the late game, really, like the invoker and the S Oh wow, he got the courier, I believe, S4. Yeah, he got the courier. Nicely done. Then TP's out. Any little bit of golden delay tactics oh, can help Anna, out. Anna. Anna. TP can out, which the cast. the cast. It's going to be... Ooh. We'll fly after him. It's too close for comfort. Coconuts will bonk their heads, even bounce around. <laughs> bonk, bonk, bonk. So another tower going to go down here. Uh, this is uh, the end of the second night phase soon. I, s I think that VP has done enough damage for the first two night phase. Yes. For their lineup. It's like they want to defend mid. They don't, they're don't. they not satisfied with a tower trade. They are coming in. Recognize that OG are here in numbers. Shapeshift going to lead things off here. The blink out from no one. And OG may just have to cut their losses here as they are going to lose the Shaker. That's going to hurt his Blink Dagger progression and no one on the high, uh, no tail on the high ground. Going to get the kill onto Solo's Witch Doctor, but there isn't really a good escape plan for him. Perhaps a Sunder, he turns, throws it out, but he's still being focused down. Does not have yep. any escape to the east. Flies TP got cancelled by no one's yep. use. So three kills for a Witch Doctor and they defended their power. Yep. You don't Defend give tower. any towers when you're winning. You when you're here. They got a couple familiar kills as well. Roshan and is down. Solar Crest. Yeah, they got Solar Crest. They don't have the Necro Book, but also doesn't seem. Don't need the Necro Book. <laughs> Just Agreed. need the Solar. So Shaker died, but he's still close to his dagger. I think this dagger could be a turning point. Oh, VP actually getting cold feet at the Roche Pit. No, they're going to come back in. They backed off for a second. I think they only saw one hero yeah, bottom, the, the and it's the Prophet. The moment they saw showing himself yeah. it, then They're worried that four heroes are smoking towards them with Prophet keeping in, but once they see mid, they haven't seen Anna. They're scanning a lot of heroes with these wolves. Good micro coming out from Ramses to spot the movement of OG. They have the dagger now, yep. so will this be the turning point? Problem is, it comes at the same time that VP get to secure themselves an Aegis, so one less viable one fight, to go Parker. on. Parker, one fight is all OG needs. One good fight. Yeah, with the with smoke in hand, they may be looking to actually fight into VP. One team fight will change the tide of the game. If they can kill... I'm not sure how much of a team fight they can take. They may just be able to find some pickoffs, but... I mean, eventually, VP is going to want to push the high ground. Look at these wolves. There's one wolf on no -tail, one on Anna. They are just tracking heroes this, all over the map. This got the, the dagger? On no, the, they, on they, from what I could see, they didn't. They had them on the two core heroes. As far as on warding duty. Here comes OG smoked up. Lycan well, going to snag this haste and look for the no -tail kill, but there's a smoked up shaker nearby. Pops the shrine, perhaps a bit preemptively. Hotel is oh, going to be chased down the here. Big echo, Familiar yeah. stun number one, number two. Nice. Oh, doesn't actually get no one with the second one. Sunder just to save his life. 
not looking for an echo. They're looking for the split push. Prophet TP then mid will finish off the tier one tower with Treants. Like this play, the courier. Whoa, not gonna find it. Also, in good news, S4 does not get found because he was actually very close to Lil on the Night Soccer. You can really see a sense of urgency from BP. They've even picked up a Crimson Guard on Lil's Night Soccer with the intent to try and break this game very early on and try and breach the high ground. They have to, like, look at how greedy OG is right now. Double Midas with their lineup. If somehow they can hold the game for another 10 minutes to farm and just one team fight. If OG wins one team fight, like, you, you, you can be very like very comfortable in this situation as you have. But one, if you lose one team fight, you're just gonna yep. be in a very bad spot against what OG has. Right. Called out with the vision behind the tower. It's a point where VP have complete map control, wards up, nighttime advantage. But again, this does lead to some split push. They're losing. They're losing a lot of like lane pressure though from the other two sides. That's not a kill that really hurts. OG all too much considering Fly will be back up for the base defense, but the question still remains, can you defend your base? Because split push is what OG are doing, and BP are just going to say, let's go high ground. Uh-oh, uh -oh, Invoker, Hannah. BP's into a bit of a tough spot there. Now it's time to get a bit low here. Perhaps they need that Necro book. It is coming soon. Ramsey's got it up. Does he want to commit this for the push? Sonic Wave, they burst down, no tell on the Terra Blade. He has got buyback and may just have to use it. Problem is, he does not have Metamorphosis. Should he buy back it? I don't know if they can actually... Oh, as far as Rating mid. Yeah, I've seen this one before. <laughs> Player from the same team as... Dude, dude, look at the damage. They Both the tier trees took wow. the same amount of damage. Oh as my for God. channeling his inner Admiral Bulldog here. <sighs> Bulldog may not be in Seattle, but he is here in spirit. As S4 does some hefty damage Gosh, to the tier 3 that tower. that was such a good move by S4. Good play. Very good play. Yeah, and the tower's defended. TB didn't have to buy back. It, it was a nice play to burst down the TB without him getting the Sunder off. BP really very calculated in their approach to that, but the damage done from S4. So formidable. right now, BP has to be very careful when they push. They need to make sure that the other lanes are shoved out. Uh, have la Maybe lane wants to catch out the Prophet, because Prophet right now is going to start to rat a lot. They have to try and pick him off if they can with, say, the Night Stalker or the Pop. Someone needs to go and hunt. Yep. Send the ball scouting, look for the, the pesky Prophet. He's gonna back. place another Same one. Same clip. He's back! He loves this clip. He did it on, on both the north and the south yeah. side. It's so hard to get to plant wards That's normally when you you're rat. behind, but... That's how you rat. Yeah. Good. He's all scout at the Night Stalker coming in. Night Stalker's trying to go back for an Ag Scepter, but he doesn't have a Midas. He committed to the Crimson Guard, so this... I was trying to go back for an Ag Scepter. This Ag will be fairly slow at this point. This is not a hero that's going to farm particularly fast at this stage of the game. Your money comes from our team. <laughs> and they've taken all the most of the outer towers, so the team gold is only really going to come from getting racks at this point. For that, uh, the if they can get this tier 3, then there'll be two shrines available. That's true. There's still one more tier 2. Yeah, close to it, and with the Queen of Pain, Aegis plus DD, it does look like they may yeah, be out. They're making out. sure the lanes are all pushed out, but the courier's going to die. Courier gets sniped by it. Is there anything? Profit. Oh, there's a Vlad inside. Oh boy. That's that is nice actually quite significant. That is quite significant, the Vlad. For the, the Lycan. This is again, we talk about these itemization being very early game oriented. The Orchid on the Shaker. Immediate blinks back. The Crimson Guards being popped. They want to maybe try and force the issue here, but taking the T3 tower is one thing. Taking the racks, perhaps a bit of a tougher ass. VP. Do they look to follow this one up? They're trying to burn. No Tails Mani, he goes to the Venom with the ultimate, the Sonic Wave to follow up, Fly getting low, as does Anna, he's been awkward up, it should be enough damage to bring him down, the sound is going to wear off and he does end up dying, the buybacks now coming out, they've killed S4's Nature's Prophet, no split push to worry about, and VP just going to take the Time heads up ditch. fight. Time to ditch, double buyback. Yeah, double buyback, job done, that is a big win for VP, they don't care about getting the racks right now, they know they have made a big dent in the OG economy, and can fall back, take some shrines, and off of that, they pull very far ahead. A 3,000 gold win for them on their fight recap. not seen the big echoes yet. Derek's just looking for it. Yeah, he, got, he got silenced right away just now. That's why he couldn't get the echo. Very fast reaction from no one with the, the Orchid. And then the silence from the Night Stalker went out on the Invoker, preventing him from doing too much. Both heroes being heavily controlled. The one... Perhaps consolation for OG is they did not lose their racks, but those buybacks come with a heavy price. price. Yeah, very heavy price.
but smoke. they survived another night phase. They smoke on the walls, or I think the walls may have just been hitting that shrine. I'm not sure if BP saw that one. As OG do straight towards the BP side. They'll see the yeah. venue in just a second. It is daytime. BP uh, ping this one out. It does not look like the smoke will connect. He is not an easy kill, to be honest. It's yeah. quite tanky. Look at his item. Solar Crest and a plate near four star. Oh, they caught Witch Doctor trying to ward Solo. Uh, Crimson Guard actually going to probably save his life. The Familiar is not able to do a whole lot of damage. He is not even dying. And now, why is he trouble? Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Okay. No one wants more. He looked in, looked to blink in, trying to find a target to Yule's up there, but couldn't do so. S4's back to the split push, keeping in bottom. You know, you can only do this for so long. <sighs> oh, no. And they get the Yule's blink. Oh, he doesn't get inside. Had to kind of guess where he was sprouted and TPing. Back to the top lane, it is. Familiars kind of split push these lanes a little bit. Very pesky stuff. BP for now holding their own and possibly just looking to set up for the next Roshan. Set up for the next Roshan, the Axe, he's halfway there. More than halfway there. Yeah, they've taken That's... one shrine. They may want to take the other shrine in the next couple of minutes. Push, the push ag... out the lanes, take the shrine, and then the get on wards up. The Lil and a gem, like someone buy him a gem. That would be... Oh, he's very close. He's yeah, just That would be away. the next thing that they want. If you're OG, you may want to recognize that he is currently trying to farm it, and he's alone. He's actually quite gankable in this top lane. Even committing like an Echo Slam to kill him is well worth so it, I feel. You're going to need like two big heroes to kill him. He's, he's yeah. quite tanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have to be like a Blink Echo, but... Okay, trying to the lights, find a kill like that. Lights got turned off. Probably not going to have much chance to catch him. Roshan's going to be up very soon. There we go. So the Shrine is mentioned. They, they push out the lane, they take the Shrine. Very systematic play coming out from VP. Yeah. And OG just needs to keep trying to farm whatever they can throughout the game. Oh, they're taking a tier 2 tower bottom. Yeah, they need to buy time and space for everyone else to get more items. This is a lane that VP is going to have to address now because they're just going to be pushing through to that tier 3 tower. VP showing themselves at top and this perhaps cause problems for them as they will have to yeah, TP back the Queen of Pain now and deal with bottom lane. Oh, he has his Aghanims now. Okay. Okay, Can this is going to be very hard to split. Um, someone should buy him the gem, I guess. Benno could. Witch Doctor doesn't have the money. May just try and uh, get no, Knowing this kid, they're probably going to wait for the Witch Doctor to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're going to do that one. I mean, pro I think probably the the best move would be just get the Venom to buy it, because Witch Doctor has not been having much yeah. space, space to farm, so... Yeah, Venom's very I mean, he's far not too. that far from the gem, if they want him to buy it. So. Night Soccer could even finish himself, but we'll see. How much they also don't know, like Prophet hasn't bought a Shadow Blade yet, yet they may not feel like the gem is no, a necessity. Still, still the gem is good for the wards and the yeah. invoker. You still want to get it. Three minutes of night time and OG is setting up, waiting patiently for a pick off at bottom lane. Problem is, VP are nowhere to be seen. They're at Roshan. Taking this one without any contest or fight. Lil scouting around that accept and the haste rune, meaning he is Fairly untouchable. The illusion will scout this out, but ultimately OG are on the other side of the map and cannot stop this. Sunstrike sees it, but that's it. So we'll send the treants towards top. Looks like there's a game plan. Push out the lanes and then set ourselves up to break high ground. You've got to make sure all three lanes are pushed out. Right now, bottom lane seems to be the main problem lane. Yep. Prophet and is there with Ags though. He is going to see and scout a lot. Prophet and Terrible has to find a way to creep skip, make sure the creeps don't reach their base somehow. But Night Stalker is going to set up. looks very dead, yeah. He's got a Yule Scepter. He's going to throw it up on himself, but when he lands... No detection, I think. Really? I mean, uh, that is... They have no gem, right? No, they don't. That is a costly... Should have oh, been an Invoker a big, kill. That would have been a big kill. So are they going to kill for the gem? <laughs> yeah, I feel like the second that happened, it's like, alright, yeah, he's queued yeah. up the gem. Night Soak is like, yeah, that, that's not happening again, guys. Probably kind of Lil's job as well to be the one with detection there. 
You're not gonna have a gem, have at least some dust. But the second VP rotate bottom, OG rotate top. They're like, all right, we can't split push bottom. Let's split push top, push this one out as fast as possible. And change their line of attack. But again, it's no one now with boots at travel. He's gone for the anti split push technology here. <laughs> Whoop. Can I get this kill? That would be safe. He's BKBs. He get, get him low. Oh, he wants to save the AES. Yeah, they want that for the high ground push. Can't blame him. He needs to make sure he doesn't get hit by another Sun Strike. <laughs> Yeah, it could be a, a follow-up one fairly soon. He's gonna try soon, soon right? You see? Oh. He's, he goes straight to the shrine. He's like, yeah, let's make sure that doesn't happen. Double shrine, triple shrine. No one uses all three shrines. <laughs> he triple shrines these boots are traveling in. No one not messing around with getting back to the, the fight. TB gonna be forced to metamorphosis. Needs to be very careful here, though. If he does end up going down, he will not have it should he buy back. Defending this rack's gonna be very tricky. They're trying to keep it alive with the Sprout. Crimson Guard Croc just to try and defend them. Invoker is just split pushing top. Will OG even try and fight this or will they go for the full on rat? Prophet is bottom. Prophet TP's in bottom. <laughs> They're going all out. They want to split push. TP back. VP recognized. We've got to address this. Pasha gonna go looking for S4. S4 doesn't actually have a TP to get out of here. Meanwhile, top lane, Invoker. He's uh, doing damage to the tier 3 tower there, back at bottom. It's going to be S4 being chased down. Can't TP for a couple more seconds. S4 oh. needs to sprout himself and get out. I don't think he's actually going to survive this one. He's going to go down. The poison damage ticking through him, and OG did lose their bottom lane of Rax, so... Formidable effort from them. Some damage done to the Radiant tier 3 towers, but Prophet's downfall ultimately not having a TP scroll. Well, he did, but it it's was on cooldown, cool yeah. need to buy time. Losing one lane of Rax is definitely not game over for OG, but it is one step closer to VP. If they can control the split push. I mean, how are they going to split push now with the Axe, Gem, Night Stalker? And we saw it there. It's, it's still possible, Winter. It's going to be quite difficult, though, because as long as they control that, yeah. it only happened because they were sh shutting out. down one lane. Not this time. Nah, nah. It's actually only got two enemy heroes on him. Queen of Pain is rotating in, but... I still go like for this kill. Not the familiar. He's being forced to resummon. S4 immediately TPing top once he sees three heroes at bottom, saying, okay, let's get this lane shoved. The second you see most of VP's lineup, you have to shove out lanes where they are not. No Tail's even headed up top as well to pose a threat to split push. He's going to finish off his Skadi. Uh, but the creeps are so far away. VP, nice feel, VP, VP feel like they can just go right now. And Notel recognize that as well. Boca very far forward, needs to be careful. Mana may just be dead here. He will have a buyback. I think he's going to just have to straight up use it right away if they want to defend this middle lane. Notel does not have Metamorphosis for a little bit though, and that is a problem. No one BKBs on the front lines. Does still have the Aegis to play around. Notel falls back with the Metamorphosis. Can they protect the racks? The range racks getting very low. The melee racks being the big important one. The split push at top takes out the T3 tower though. OG are holding their own, they're chasing, they're looking for kills here, it's Anna's Invoker, he can't afford to die here, he just fought back and played very aggressive, there's the Echo Slam, Jerex catches two, sets up a couple of kills for the team, Solo as well as Lil go down, that was the gem being dropped as well, not bad for OG, they do lose Anna though, that was the poison damage from the Venomancer taking him down, that is a heavy, heavy loss for them, but... Rax saved in the mid lane and a gem stolen. It is still quite an expensive defense there. Buyback. Buyback. Yeah, that's. And now they have a second boots of travel. So it's gonna be even harder for them to split DP right now. Double bots, they can easily defend it with the panel and TP in. Things are only gonna get harder from here. Definitely not an easy game. We talked about how OG want to drag this late and try and scale with their greed, their Midas's, but ultimately you get to the late game and you're down multiple lanes of racks and down a gold deficit like 15 to 20,000 gold. It doesn't matter that you're in the late game because that deficit may just be insurmountable. We aren't perhaps quite at that point, but all it may take is one more Roshan, one more Aegis and Cheese for VP could be the killing blow for OG at this point. Yeah, they haven't really gotten that big fight, you know, I've been talking about. They need that one big fight with the Echo. Yep. That fight was like, they only killed the two supports and they had to buy back the Invoker. Wow. And next thing, BP, 
like the safest thing for VP to do is chill for a few minutes, wait for the next potion cheese, then take that and go high ground again. They're not in a hurry at all. Contain the opponents, put up good wards, try to. Oh, they're actually just gonna go. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah. like they wanna... They don't know, care. They wanna fight while some of these ultis are on cooldown. Echo Slam 20 seconds away. They know Invoker has no buyback. TB's Metamorphosis 10 seconds away. So we'll have this for the high ground defense and OG are gonna be... put on display here. Their high ground defense has to come up big for this one. Mid lane, it looks like Lycan gonna do some split push of his own. He says, you guys aren't the only ones who can split push. I can too. Splitting OG's attention to multiple lanes position they want to be at. Lycan hovering around that mid lane has not fully committed just yet to the high ground. Jerex knows it's there. He's been scouted by this Lycan Wolf though, so he can't even find a good blink echo opportunity as a result. He is just being tagged up. Lycan now going to commit his ultimate. TB getting very low. Still has the Manta style to get out of that silence and Ingo the Necrobook to the mid lane. Meanwhile, attention also being driven to the top lane. As mid lane will be defended, the top lane could find itself in a bit of trouble. Cast bouncing around, keeping no tail stunned up with the Maledict. Anna wants to take out the Witch Doctor. Will likely bring him down. Can he quite do that? The Sonic Wave to the north with the Venom Ultimate. Big damage takes out TB. He's going to instantly buy back. Still has the Metamorphosis. They've got to defend this top lane. They've lost the mid melee racks. OG need to win this fight, but so far they're just being pushed deeper and deeper back in their base. The buybacks. All that's really keeping them in it. Pasha gets low, but hasn't actually gone down here. The tornado will clip him. Has to go to Sunstrike? He does. He needs to land this one. Gets the kill. Nicely played by the Invoker, but it is still OG. They held the racks in top lane, spot. Yeah, they, they lost one the, lane. But they lost the melee in the mid lane. And they did lose the tier 3 tower in top. So bit by bit, VP inch closer and yep. closer to a win. Terabit bot back. Yep. You just need both every, up soon. Yeah, and every time VP win a fight like that, there's another oh, item on Oh no, Prophet! Yikes. I think. Uh, nope. Oh, they don't have detection. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well. <laughs> Night Sulkin now queues up and buys a dust. <laughs> you know, a little uh, fantastic, aggressive support player. So much fun to watch, but we've seen, you know. Sometimes you're just like, oh, I don't want to buy dust. We don't need it, but. The greed got all over him. Yeah. It hasn't hasn't cost them this game as far as like they're they're still obviously miles ahead and poised to win this game, but it's one of those things where I've gotta to remember to buy that detection. Sometimes it's not about remembering, it's about one thing or not. <laughs> they, yeah. just, they just don't want to buy it. Yeah, he hasn't forgotten it's more just like he, he he didn't expect Nature's Prophet to TP on top of himself to need that detection there. Like solo you should actually buy everything. Let me get all the items. Problem is, Witch Doctor is dying in these fights or not going to be... He's not mobile and active on the map like a Night Stalker is. So it's, it really is Night Stalker who needs to be carrying it. But here okay, we go. the other Again. excuse is we have Necro Book level 3. Yeah, good. <laughs> You've got Lil's back. He'll be, he'll be happy to know that. Roshan claimed Aegis and Cheese. I believe this is double Cheese now. Lycan's got one. And Venno, or is there another Cheese? Or... Yeah, Night Stalker's got the other. So they've got two cheeses, Aegis, a fresh BKB on the Lycan. It, it really feels like they can just BKB and right-click down the remaining racks if they want to. Can they kill him? Kill the Aegis, at least. He knows. He saw the uh, Ghost Walked Invoker on the lane. It's being pinged out as well. They're saying, let's just get out of there. Let's. We don't need to mess around with this bottom lane as long as it's fairly pushed nah, out. He's just going to stay here and make sure the lane doesn't come in. And boost of travel at the last moment. Okay. Yep. Doing the right thing. Shivers, Blink, Scream. That's a real Terra Blade. No one needs to be a little bit careful. The Sunstrike will be slightly off the mark. No one getting fairly low here. He actually has to f find some way to heal up before he can perhaps join. He has got teammates with cheese, so he may just ask his teammates to use one of those cheeses. Will he TP on in? There we go. He's coming in. Very low in health still, and there we go. Instantly gets past the cheese to use. They have two, so they may as well just use them frivol frivolously. Lycan pops the ultimate, the fish are going to block the entrance to the base. OG say, get out of our base, no one ignores the order as he just blinks onto the high ground. There is going to be a tornado, Sunstrike to hit him, the Sonic Wave is there, not doing enough damage to bring anyone down just yet. The EMP followed up by a Deathling Blast, Chaos Mirror combo, Anna doing some good damage here, but it's no tell on the Terra Blade. Sunder on cooldown, being brought down, Fly is going to tick away to the Maledict, and OG have lost their remaining racks here. And they, they got have the melee bottom though. Probably lost game one. <laughs> 
I say that as Nature's Prophet is doing some split push. He's going to start chipping at the tier 4 towers, but this is not a base race he can win. OG have to find ways to defend and kill VP here. Lycan's even TP back to defend the Radiant base here. OG will not tap out just yet, but it really feels like this is the end. Some damage being dealt by the Nature's Prophet to the Radiant base, but it is not going to be enough. Tip the scales right now. Perhaps OG just going to look to reset and try and drag this one out a bit longer. Age is still in hand for the Queen of Pain and the lead now up to over 22,000 gold. Quop has hit that level 25, gets the spell Lifesteal. Really where she becomes near unkillable. So OG will well, make VP play it out. Make them secure the win. Welcome to the late game Quop. <laughs> yep. Shivas plus... Uh, I think Shivas plus Mio is like my favorite late game build for Quop. Goes back to that pickup or has something else in mind. Divine oh. Rapier. Base race time. This is not an item you can really fight with. He doesn't have a BKB. He doesn't have any way to team fight. This is, I feel like, one purpose in mind. Hit the enemy throne. I feel like he needs like a Mask of Madness or something to go with this. AC maybe? <laughs> See how this one plays out for S4. Problem is, none of the lanes are pushed out. You're up against Mega Creeps. Oh! oh that was so close! <laughs> nice rape you. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if we could get our hands on that one, but I... From, yeah, you can't actually backdoor when you're against Mega Creeps if you can't push on any of these lanes. So S4 may be just forced to fight with this one. We'll see VP charge forward looking to end this game. They've caught Jerax who will go down before he can cast a spell. No Echo Slam could spell disaster. Venomancer are going to drop the Poison Nova as OG getting farmed in their fountain. The cast bouncing around. It's going to kill off the Visage as well. No one's Queen of Pain. Going untouched. 16, 0, 11. Zero deaths on him. Zero deaths on Ramsey's Lycan as well. He was the one who got pressured in lane. A close to flawless performance from Team Virtus Pro. MVP, Queen of Pain. Yes, no. No doubts about that. The Quab and the Night Stalker, yeah, uh, just I... too much to handle. Like the first few Night Space, they did too much damage to OG's lineup. Yeah, it's it was really those two orchestrating the victory in a lot of ways. But I don't know. I feel like they probably should have helped. In I mean, the Invoker just got like felt like he just got trashed too much in the lane, and Ushaka didn't feel like he wanted to help because maybe he felt like he couldn't help him. It was an unexpected last pick. I feel we were both kind of surprised when we saw it. It was the final pick of the draft. They know they're going up against the Queen of Pain. What OG did this game, they left Gustav uh, S4 on a safe lane and they went Angle Try with the Terra Blade, <laughs> Visage, and Earthshaker. Not sure if that was the best decision, and in the end, VP made the correct decision. They gave up first blood on the Witch Doctor, didn't even bother tipping back to the bottom lane. He just went to the other lane, he played with the Venom. VP, the winner, lead the series 1 0, and we'll be looking to secure a 2 0 win over one of their top rivals here at TI7, the team that eliminated them in the grand finals of the Kiev Major. We're going to see if they can get a 2-0 win here in the group stage as we come right back after a bit of a break with game number two.